All right, Jay. So I want to officially welcome you now. So I don't know if you know this. Actually, you probably saw the new graphic, but the new name of the podcast is the Find Your Breakthrough Podcast. Okay. So the reason it's called that is because it's powered by in the lab. So our, our slogan in the lab is to help is to find your breakthrough. So throughout your lifetime, we want to help people find multiple breakthroughs throughout their lifetime. Yeah. And progress and breakthroughs happen in the lab. That's where Got all it. this stuff happens. That's yeah. where, you know, you're in the lab every day, working out, grinding, getting yeah. your crazy squats on that we're going to talk about. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's the whole premise of the podcast. So okay. the reason I'm bringing on guests like yourself and all the other people we're going to have on in the future in the past is like, so the listeners can learn from you guys and take your experiences. And hopefully that'll help mold them and help, you know, change their experiences in the lab so they can find a breakthrough from what they learned from you guys. Gotcha. So this is just a whole learning experience. You know, that's, that's what, you know, we pride ourselves on in the lab. So before we get started, you're the second guest of 2021. Hey. You're actually the second guest of this new podcast that we just, you know, branded within the lab. So I appreciate your, your time. Man, thank so you're, you. you're a busy man. You're always out in the streets dunking. <laughs> So I'm taking some show training time away from you, but I, I greatly appreciate it, man. So what I want to do is if it's cool with you, just throw you, throw it to you, throw you the mic and just let you kind of give a little introduction to yourself for the people who don't know. Okay, definitely. All right. So uh, for the people that do not know, my name is Jonathan Clark. I am 32 years old from Los Angeles, California. I currently live in Fresno, California. I've been in Fresno for about six years now um by profession i am a physical education teacher i've been teaching this is my sixth year uh, i was teaching eighth grade science so I, i'm dual credentialed in science and pe uh, i've been teaching uh, i've been coaching track and field uh specializing in jumps and that kind of segues into what i do on my free time I go by the moniker J. Clark the Jumper. I've been a professional dunker for about, I'd say about eight years now. I've traveled, you know, all across the world. Um, I guess you could say international dunk champion. Um, <laughs> I've been on, you know, TV shows such as, you know, Dunk Kings. I was on Dunk League uh, season one and season two. Um, done countless dunks. I currently have a world record for um, outdoor. Uh, highest outdoor rim at 11 feet uh, eight inches oh okay okay the goal i also have the world record for standing vertical that's uh 10 feet nine and a half um and and kind of you know the goal is to train to be uh, the goal is to be the first person to dunk over 12 feet so a couple of people have dunked on 12 but my goal is to be the first you know human to go over 12 and you know do some other some other dunks that you know people think uh, are impossible Dude, that's so amazing. Uh, first of all, I think I remember seeing the world record thing, but actually I forgot about it. Even when I was doing some research and looking you up, I didn't come across it. So that's actually really dope. But it's even cooler that you were saying you want to be the first to basically jump to the moon. and <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> somehow try and dunk. So no one has ever, you're, you're saying 12 feet. So, yeah, so um, over that, uh, I forget the guy's name, the guy, he was on the Globe Trotters, and I feel terrible because um, like watching that, like that was like crazy to see uh, 12 feet yeah. was the limit, you know, the, uh, a couple people have claimed 12, but, um, uh, you know, for the people that do know and the people that are in tune with like the real, the guy from the Globe Trotters is legit 12 feet, no one else has come close Uh in, in terms of like that feet so the goal is to kind of you know legit over 12 feet 12 one and beyond whatever whatever happens happens but you know that's that's kind of you know the big the big training goal right now so since since we're on it right now what's the highest that you have currently attained in terms of getting a full dunk down so 11 11 8 is actually the highest dunk i've ever dunked uh, indoors and outdoors so um, the summer that I actually broke the the world record outdoors, we ended up competing in Dunk League season two, and okay. I ended up tying that um, indoors uh, and had some really close attempts, I think higher, but it just wasn't, it wasn't meant to be that day. Um, but I think, you know, based off of kind of how everything's been going in training recently, I think it's, you know, we're, we're, we're getting close. Dude, that's so exciting. So we're going to definitely touch on this more. Definitely. The motivations and the things behind it. Cause I think there's just a whole story that we need to tell the world yes. about you and what you're trying to achieve. Um, 
But before we get into that, let's talk about the just yourself a little bit more. And I guess the question okay. I have is, if something I'm actually very interested in now because you're this wild athlete is, you know, what were your parents like? Did you, are your parents jumpers? Are there basketball players, any kind of, you know, athletic? Yeah. Jumpers? So um, my mom was actually a division one basketball player. She played at Pepperdine. Okay. Um, my dad was an artist, um, unathletic, uh, but my uncles, so I, uh, my uncles were athletes. So the, you have that, you have that recipe, I guess, for athletic potential. Um, my, my dad really wasn't around like that. So it was just kind of my mom and sports was kind of, I feel like, you know, a lot of kids in the, you know, the socioeconomic situation, you know, single parent household, trying to make it work. Sports was definitely like that outlet that everyone yep. kind of went to. Um, it was that, you know, that pipe dream of like, you know, this is your way of making it out, you know, that, you that you know, you see that cliche tale of like, that's the only way you're going to do it. So like, definitely, I gravitated towards that. My mom, you know, being the, the mother that she was supported anything that I did. So kind of, she fostered that hard work. And then from there, it like, I always think of like Inception, like the movie Inception, where yeah. like that seed was planted and how that seed can like, create these big you know these big things you know later down in life and it's like that that idea of hard work kind of never really went away and I think that's why you know being 32 years old having had two knee surgeries like I'm still training like that little kid who's trying to make it out even though like there's no real need in a sense to do it, it like it's, some, it's just something I enjoy and something that's kind of like hardwired into my brain for some weird reason I love it man I, I love the motivations behind everything and also I think something that gets lost in translation is the fact that you are 32. I, <laughs> I just, you know, even for me, when I look at you, I see you dunk. First of all, I'm never thinking about the age. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, God damn, this, this man can fly. But it's like, when you really sit down and think about it, and we'll talk about the injuries too, it's like, not only did you have multiple injuries that were, some people will consider career ending or, you know. Yeah, never, definitely. You're, yeah. Back. you're also 32. Like, you're not, yeah. and, and I know you can, like, I just, turn 30 so i you know i feel weird just even saying that but it's like yeah i know that as you get a little bit older your body changes definitely <laughs> yeah I, and i know you're experiencing that the most by yeah yeah, yeah it's just it's crazy it, man. so it's, it's one of those things where um even before my first injury it's um how it happens i would say is like you you when you're younger you feel invincible you right. you feel different like i you could eat whatever you want you can stay up all night those those things don't apply yeah and as you get older it's like if i don't get you know a minimum amount of sleep i'm gonna feel it the next day if i don't stretch the right way i'm gonna feel it right then yeah. and there so it's like it, it it becomes you know every little thing that you do becomes so much more important um as you get older yeah i feel like you know me and dev always talk about this when we're younger high school, even co playing college basketball, you always neglected everything. You eat McDonald's Definitely. before the games, you know, stretching. It's like, come on, bro. It's like, it's almost like Iverson talking about practice. Like we don't stretch. Yeah, we definitely. Just go, we just hoop. Yeah. Just go and hoop. Then, <laughs> now to get older, it's like you try to play a men's league game or you just try and play pickup. You know, you might pull a hamstring. So you're like, I got to, you know, you got 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it's just different, man. It's the struggles of, I guess, you know, getting older, even though we're still Definitely. young, but okay, that's dope. So um, who has been, there may have been multiple, but who's been the biggest influence on your life so far? If you can, you know, pick one person or two. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say I, I'm going to go with, uh, I'll go with uh, two in a sense. I'll go with like a physical person and then an idea. Um, the physical person is obviously going to be my mother. Like I, I tell people this story. If I were to call my mom right now and like legitimately wholeheartedly believe this, if I were to get on the phone right now with my mom and say, Hey mom, I want to quit being a teacher. I want to be an astronaut. She will sit there with a straight face and be like, all right, what do you need to do? What are the steps? What can I do to help you get there? So it's like that, that idea of having that, that support system is one of the big reasons why I feel like I can go out and do things that seem impossible because like, I've always had that unwavering, you know, in on my corner, that one person that will ride for me on any on anything that I do and then I would say for this idea it, it definitely has to be the the black men in my life that that have influenced me the most and uh 
uncoincidentally, they've all been teachers. So um, I'm gonna have to go with, you know, my club track coach, Robert King, uh, my high school track coach, Michael Porterfield, my uncle who was, uh, my late uncle who passed away, but he was a dean and a basketball coach, Duan Hurt. Um, those, those three men, um, and there's a couple other uh, others, but those are those are probably the top three that are kind of just influenced. Like when I look at the idea of success, right? Uh, you obviously look at like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and those types of guys as, as successful people. But when I looked at their life and got to see their life, they have families. They you know have a positive effect on their community. They right. you know they live the life that like when I got to my goal was when I got to this age. Like I want to be like them, and it's like me being in that position it's like you know it's like that's my my idea of success so like those those three guys and, and my mother i love that man those, those are all great influences I, I like how you said that something i really like you know look to lebron for is like he's you know, bigger than basketball so kind of yes. like you said like those guys are like they're doing community work there's not just like hey I'm a, I'm a coach yeah they're impacting lives you know all over the place like look at how they impacted you and then they're just doing more things and you know their daily they when they wake up every day they have their duties right Yes. You got to teach, you got to do this, that. But then outside of that, they may be spending the same amount of hours building up other things, which is, I think is yeah. what makes these people unique. And that's why it makes sense, you know, that they're your influences like that. So yeah. these guys obviously, like I said, influence you, help change your life in so many positive ways. So I have a list here, which I think obviously these guys, I already know these guys helped you achieve a lot of these goals. So, you know, triple, triple jump champion. You have all kinds of state champion awards. I was Googling you all kind of, <laughs> crazy dunk awards you know dunk fest this celebrity crush uh, dunk champion all kind of all kind of awards yeah the reason i'm bringing those up is i want to know what you think is your biggest accomplishment to date if you could classify something oh that one's that one's tough to think about it, it's funny because when i think about it it's it's never when i when i think of my biggest accomplishment it'll never be like a trophy it'll never be like a physical okay accolade um because those things and, and i understand like it's you know not to not to make light of those awards and things like that those are all awesome those are cool I, as you can see in the background i have you know tons of bibs i've been able to travel and win a lot of trophies i think it would be uh, you know it, it might be the master's degree i think you know when i when i look at like okay yep when I look at, you know, things that I've done and, and assess, you know, the work that it took to get there, I think it's, those are the ones that I appreciate more than, you know, dunking. I, I, I work really hard to, to be a, an elite level dunker, but I, you know, I've been blessed with this ability and with the hard work. So, you know, that in a sense comes natural. Um, those awards, I, I, I love those. I appreciate those, but you know, like when I think of education, like I've, I had to work really hard to get there. You know, it, you know, something that I that I deem important and that and I've pursued um, to be, you know, important in my life. The awards and, and things are important, but, you know, the things that I've earned for myself, the things that I've done to become a better me, I think are, are the ones that I, I kind of cherish more. So um, it. Right now, I'd probably say the master's degree. And, and, you know, if I'm sitting down talking to my wife and she were to tell me about some of the things that I've done, I'd be like, oh, yeah, no, I like that one more. But course, I think yeah. I think the education one right now um, that I can think of is probably number one. I really respect that. So you have a master's degree in science? Kinesiology. In the kinesiology. So uh, the emphasis is physical education. Um, the goal initially when I graduated from college was to become a um, track and field coach at the college level. Um, and, and I was kind of looking at um, typical requirements. So a lot of them have master's degrees, a lot of them go on and get these things. So I, I started doing that. And uh, to pay for grad school, I ended up starting, uh, I started substitute teaching because I needed, I needed money to kind of pay for school. And once I stepped in a, in a high school classroom, that was kind of when it was like, dude, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to do this because this wow. is, this is fun. So, um, yeah, that, that really kind of like is how the teaching thing happened. That's so crazy, man. I never knew that. I'm, ha I'm happy you kind of brought, you know, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cause I was going to definitely ask you how you became a teacher, but yeah, 
even just kudos to you, man, because like, I know not that I have the master's degree, but I've thought about it so many times. So I know people who've had it and I know the amount of hard work, time and dedication you have yeah. to put into that to make that a reality. So, you know, much respect to you for doing that because a small amount of people, man, can, yeah. you know, have the mindset and the determination to complete that, let alone yeah. even just start it. So <laughs> that's awesome. No, I didn't know that. I love these podcasts for so many different reasons, but also because we get to continue building our connection, but I get to learn things about you that I never <laughs> people know, right? You don't yeah. go every day. I have my master's in, in uh, kinesiology. So that's you. So I got another question for you before yep. we kind of end off the kind of intro introductory section. What's one word you could use to describe how you want 2021 to go for yourself? Um, kind of going with the theme is growth. I think it's, it's one of the big things that when, when the quarantine hit, I think everybody kind of went into their, their little cocoon and started self-assessing like, where am I, where do I want to be? Um, I, I took, I took it as this, this sense of like, I always would complain being, you know, a pro dunker and a teacher, I never have enough time to do something. So, um, you know, in March, I had to sit down and, and be real with myself. It's like, all right, now you have time to do the things that you said you wanted to do. How are you going to go about doing that? And I think kind of looking at, how you know keeping in the back of my mind at the time like all right this is not going to be forever this is not going to be forever and now we're in january and we're still in quarantine it's like okay let's let's kind of reassess what you said again like where were you in terms of the things that you wanted to do all right you did that that's kind of cool you started to do that you said you were going to do this and you didn't do it so now like let's let's really you know reevaluate so i think kind of 2021 the big goal is you know, understanding, you know, where I want to be in a few years and being willing to be in the trenches to make that happen. So kind of just growth, like getting better at everything that I want to do so that, you know, 2022, 2023, I'm able to produce the things that I envision that I want to do, um, make it, make it happen. I love it, man. It, it makes me happy too, because that's literally my word is yeah, oh, growth. So, okay. Yeah, Cause I feel like the, I just feel like, you know, how 2020, like you say, how 2020 came about and just kind of socked us in the face. Yeah. You know, this is the year to really like separate. Like we have to continue, like we had to chalk 2020, you know, even though yeah. we did, we all still put it in work and just be like, hey, 2021's here. How much growth can we make in a year to basically double or triple what we should have done last year? Definitely. That's kind of how I see it. Right. So yeah, uh, I love it. So something just came to my mind before we go to the next section is, yep. and I, this is a question like some people I don't even know if you can answer it, but if I was to ask you like right now, you know, how do you want to be remembered? You know, when this, when you're 50, 60 and you just, I don't know, your son or someone may look back on it. Like, how do you yeah. want to be remembered? I want, I want them to remember not so much all of the, the cool accolades that, that I've, you know, hypothetically achieved at that point. I, I want, I want to be remembered as the guy who was willing to, go out and do them and not let other people dictate, you know, what's possible, what's not possible, not let obstacles get in the way. So it's like, man, he did this, but you know, at this year he, you know, tore his ACL and then he went back another a year and, ha and tore his meniscus and he still was able to accomplish this. And, you know, he just never gave up. Like, I, I, I think that, that, you know, determination and relentlessness hopefully trumps all of the cool accomplishments that, that, you know, Agreed. I will achieve. Agreed. I, I like you, man. It's just like, I just like how you like are trying to classify yourself as more than, more than a teacher, more than a dunker. It just, like you said, it comes down to like the hard work and a young kid or even your son or whoever, just trying to look at you and be like, man, I just, I just want to be like this guy. Yeah. I just want to work as hard as he, he did to get to my goals and get to where I want to be. So definitely um, actually something I completely forgot to ask, which I, I really want to is, What's it like being a dad, man? What's it What's it like having that a son and just it, to, be, to be honest, uh, like when I when I look at like all of the cool things that I've done, like none of that stuff yeah. comes close to like when I open the door now, and now my son's one years old, so now it's like he has facial expressions, he walks, he he's starting to talk. So it's like when I open the door and he sees my face and his face lights up because he sees me like that's the coolest thing ever like I take 
you know, take my jumping ability, take all that stuff. Like being someone's hero in that sense is like the coolest thing ever. And, and just the idea, like I embrace, I'm, I'm a weird guy. I embrace challenges, like embracing that responsibility of, you know, building a future leader. Like that's, that's how I see it. Like I'm, you know, I have a, I have a, the, the, the responsibility, the potential to build, you know, a future president, a future, you know, astrophysicist, whatever he wants to be, you know, if it is the NBA, cool. Awesome. If it's NFL, cool. If it's being a teacher, like, Hey, whatever it is, but it's like having that responsibility, like that, like all of, all of the emotions that come with like seeing his face, seeing the potential is like, it's like the best feeling ever. Crazy, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so, it's so cool, man. Like, obviously like, you know, one day I, I hope to have a son too, yes. because I just feel like the joy is just so different. It, it, I, it, it, any it's kid different. in general, like daughter or, or you know, son or boy, yeah. son or daughter. It's like, I, I can't wait. You know, dad's getting ready to have it too. So I'm seeing, yep. like, seeing him change. I could tell there's like joy in his voice. And like, yeah. like you probably had the excitement of like, yes, coming next. And yeah. Like, and it's no. your legacy, right? This it's it, 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 it's awesome. It's it's one of those things that like you said it's legacy. It's like you know, you are you are a product of you know your parents, you are a product of your environment and stuff like that. And to to have an impact and you know, wanting to rewrite that, like especially for me, just you know, like I said, dad was was around, like I want to be around, I want to be annoying, I'm gonna be that like. I'm gonna be that dad at you know at his games when oh, he's yeah, 17 dreaming. and doesn't want me to be there. I like I'm like I'm I'm embracing that idea of just like being there and being annoying. So it's 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 indescribable. I love, it's I love indescribable. it. So um, my ideal would be to have like you know one boy, one girl. I know for since I was like young, I was like man, I just love to have like a baby boy, baby girl, yeah, like similar ages, and then grow up together. Definitely. What what's on your mind? Is it have you like want to have a big family? So it's, it's, it's kind of funny because I'm like in my relationship with my wife, I am 1000% the go with the flow person where it's like, Oh, okay. this happens. Oh, that's cool. My wife, my wife is an academic counselor. I will say that I'll preface that before like explaining like my wife, like one of her favorite pastimes is planning. Like she's really good at like okay. planning and organizing things, which works for me because I'm like, scatterbrained all the time and it's like she's she's my biggest help in terms of like planning things out and getting things organized so it's like for me I had a younger brother older sister I was like three's cool I'm cool with three um my wife is on the same page it's like three to four is is kind of what she wants and my wife is Sweet. my wife is the type of person that what she wants is what she gets and okay, yeah. you know I'm not I'm not opposed <laughs> to that so like um probably looking at three to four um saying you know around the same age like I don't think she she wants to spread them out too too much she wants to keep them semi spread out so they can have their own like set of friends but at the same time still be within the same age range so like this is like you know now to probably 2025 2026 we'll be having kids and you know (laughs) doing the family thing i like it man i love that she's a planner too i think that's yeah. key to have in the relationship you know yes someone's gonna have that organization okay cool so dope intro um basically the show like you've read it gonna go in through learning uh yeah. growth and championship kind of just break your whole journey down yeah we'll give the listeners even more insight than we, what we already gave them so yeah. before we get into this learning stage i just want to ask because this is going to go right into that can you talk about the UCLA jerseys and like they said, the base behind you, just a little context. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming. So yeah. Um, your- I, uh, and I'll kind of, I can, I can tell it with the stories cause, yeah. cause you know, this will help explain for some people. It make more sense on why I am where I am in, in my journey. So like I said, my mom was a D one basketball player. My uncle, um, he was a uh, basketball coach, Sarah high school. They won multiple, you know, state championships. So like, basketball when I was a youth basketball was in my blood went to high school uh, went to Loyola high school um, tried out for the basketball team freshman year didn't make it uh, talked to my uncle my uncle talked to the coach and all that other stuff and it was like ah uh, you know you're just you're just you're small right now I, I started high school I was 5'4 99 pounds wow. I was a late I was a late bloomer um, so it's like all right you'll grow a little bit next year keep working hard you'll make the team everything will be good I, I worked my butt off harder than I've ever worked 
you know, at that time. And still to this day, like one of the, the, the craziest things to me, like I would practice in the rain. I remember my mom would drive to the park Love and that. turn the lights on when the, when the lights would come off, I right. would be in the park in the rain, working on my game. Like when trials came my sophomore year, I was ready. I knew I was going to make the team and I got cut again. So it was like, I, I was kind of stuck because that was like the first time I experienced failure and also experience failure when like, all right, just work hard and, and it, you'll still achieve. Um, so I had all this, this untapped potential somewhere. And my freshman year, I, I ran track because my idea was like, all right, I'm gonna run track because I want to get in better shape for, you know, tryouts. I'm gonna be in the best shape of my life. So at the time, my sophomore year, when I got cut, I was like, you know what, I'm doing this track thing. Track is going to be where I put my energy and I put my energy in track and I ended up, you know, breaking the school record my junior year. I ended up competing in the junior Olympics and all like all that hard work kind of transferred over into track. Um, in 2007, I was the state champion in the triple jump. Uh, I was the CIF champion in the, the triple jump and the high jump. And I took third place in the high jump uh, at the state meet. And I got a, a, an athletic scholarship to UCLA, which was my dream school at the time. So I ended up going to UCLA. Um, I was a two-time All-American, um, you know, multiple, you know, conference, uh, top three finishes. My, I, I, that was, the, you know, I think uh, so freshman and senior year was, I think, third, second, third, second, something like that, where, you know, like I'm, you know, I was winning all these, these things. And then 2012, I competed in the Olympic trials uh, where I took 17th, obviously top three go. So it wasn't good enough, but yeah. I, had a, I had a really successful uh, track and field career. Um, and that all kind of uh, stemmed from like that failure of uh, basketball. So like there, there was that passion for jumping. Um, and that's kind of where, like when I started running track, it was like, all right, I'm gonna get in shape, but I enjoyed this jumping thing. Cause I, I for, for forever, I just love to jump. Right. Uh, so, you know, UCLA, I did that, did the Olympic trials thing. And then um, to segue to that, my plan in 2012, after I didn't make the team, I was kind of hurt. So I, at the time I quit track and field, uh, took a year off, got a full-time job. And I started just training again because I, you know, I miss working out. I miss staying in shape. And I ended up, you know, 2013, I was like, all right, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a, a return to track and field. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start coaching. And uh, I started doing all of this. Uh, I was a volunteer assistant coach at UCLA. Um, and I started training again and I got a gym membership at LA fitness because, because of my work schedule, I wasn't able to, you know, lift with the team. I had to go to work and then I would have to lift afterwards. So I started doing that LA fitness at the time had a basketball court. I was like, yeah, let me, let me, you know, step in here, warm up and hoop a little bit. And, uh, hooping was fun. You know, I get a, a couple games in and then after the games, you know, everyone's standing around dunking. So I was like, All right, I'm, I'm, I'm a dunk a little bit. So I started dunking. Uh, and this is right around the time Instagram started posting videos. So oh, you know, I, po I posted, I posted a video to Instagram and like, you know, people liked it. And at the time, like, I remember like I was hyped when I would get like a hundred likes on a, on a post. Right. <laughs> so, uh, like I posted a dunk video like that, you know, got a hundred likes real quick. I was like, Oh, okay. So, so you guys like this. So then I started posting more dunks and more dunks. And then all of a sudden, like, my 600 followers turned into a thousand, you know, my thousand followers turned into 2000. And then I, I can, I can pinpoint the day. Cause I remember thinking about this. Um, I had track practice. It was a, it was a Friday afternoon and um, I was working on a dunk. It was a between the leg. It was a reverse between the legs, two hand finish. And I couldn't make it for the life of me. And I remember getting mad that I had to leave to go to track practice that I couldn't like work on this dunk because I, I was having so much fun in a weird way that I, you know, was missing this dunk, that, but I, I felt I was close. I got to track practice that day, just upset that I left the gym and I didn't finish what I started. And then from there, like, even though I didn't realize the dunk community existed, right. I was already hooked and I knew like, this is what I was going to do. Dude, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. The way you're stumbling into like being a teacher and into dunking. Yeah. It, it's, it's really cool, man. Like, and the fact that you've stuck with all those for these many years, this many years, yeah, uh, makes us makes the story that much better. So, before I, so you, th those stories were great. Yeah. Before I jump into everything, crazy shoe collection, see a lot of Jays and stuff over there as well. 
Is there any like, are you a sneakerhead? Is there any, anything behind any stories behind this? All this um, I, I gotta preface these before uh, oh, before oh, we get going. I got them. Uh, I was hyped. I ended up. It, the funny thing is, I ended up getting um, twelve and a half. So like when they dropped, because I wear a, so my shoe size is eleven and a half to twelve. So when they okay. dropped. The the eleven and a half and twelve are gone, and I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't miss these. So I was like, I saw the twelve and a half. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna take them, double sock it and make it work, because that's what I used to do back in the day, and I did. Lo- I I really love these shoes. Um, I gotta say that before we okay. get going about the shoe collection, <laughs> love these. Thanks, um, so the shoe collection, and I can share a little bit. Um, it, it's nothing crazy. I w- I definitely wouldn't call myself a sneakerhead. Um, I will say. Uh, the shoes that I've gotten are so growing up, like I said, growing up single parent household, mom really couldn't afford shoes. And, you know, growing up in LA where, you know, what you wear, how you dress was, was such a big thing. It was kind of, you know, I felt so self-conscious about, you know, my appearance to an extent, uh, you know, it's like when I got to high school, I, I, I kind of got comfortable and in, in just being myself and not worrying about that. And I think that's, you know, one of the coolest attributes that I can have. But as I, you know, got older and got a job and was able to afford shoes, it was definitely something where it's like, if I can afford a pair of shoes that I think are cool, I'm going to go buy them. I'm, I'm definitely not like, you know, oh, the new uh, Jordan 4s come out and they're ugly, but because everybody wants them, I have to go get them or the new Travis Scott's, you know, like that's good. I'm when, you know, when the Travis Scott's came out, uh, the light blue ones, those are cool. I like those. Yeah. The, you know, the olive green lows, yeah, yeah. like, and people are going crazy over them. Like, to be honest, in my opinion, those are ugly shoes. I don't want them, but you know, there's, there's a couple shoes that is like, all right, these came out. Like I, I have to get these. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, smelling the roses in the sense of like, you know, you've worked hard, you can, you can afford a, a nice pair of shoes or two. Um, I will say when I do buy shoes, uh, typically I buy, I buy the same pair for my wife. And uh, like that. when, when my, um, when my wife got pregnant, I, I went out and, you know, I treated myself to some space jams because I've always wanted them. I got a pair for my wife. They were super cheap and I was kind of jealous. Uh, <laughs> and then I found a pair for my, uh, for my son. So it was like, that was like, hey. our, that was our, um, our, our baby announcement where she, she had one where she, they, you know, they did the picture and everything, yeah. but I had to do one where I, you know, I laid out all the space jams and stuff like that. So um, yeah. That's dope. Man. The fact that you yeah. can now buy your, your son some shoes and that i don't know bro. that's that's and and that's that's, that that becomes a problem too like i had to like oh, that yeah. was one of the first things i had to self-assess when when the quarantine hit i was like i'm spending too much money on on this and it's like because every time i would go to Foot Locker, i would end up going to kids Foot Locker and like trying to find like oh, i gotta get the matching the matching jays for him so he's like he's tricked out and they're cheaper but yeah. still at the same time like compared to like a normal kid shoe you're still spending oh, yeah, too much yeah. too wait, much wait, money wait, but it, yeah. it's it's one of those it's one of those guilty pleasures that i don't mind as much but yeah no i I had to calm it down (laughs) that's the dad in you okay yeah so let's before we get into all these other things let's establish Mm -hmm. what your daily routine looks like okay uh, i think that'll be really good for some of the listeners definitely so um especially now with uh quarantine i'll kind of go through i'll do a fright i'll I'll, I'll one up it. I'll go Friday and Saturday. So you can kind of okay, yep, get yep. the full, the full sense. So Friday, you know, Friday morning, say five o'clock, you know, whenever my son wakes up, I'm kind of up. We kind of get him, you know, dressed, fed, all that, all that kind of stuff, getting him running around, getting him like comfortable. So I come in here, I, I have, I have this computer set up and then I'm gonna move this a little bit, but like right here, I have my work computer um, set up okay. as well. So, you know, essentially from nine to two, I'm in school. So we're um, going through the regular school day. I might have meetings in the morning with uh, my fellow uh, PE teachers where we're kind of planning out the next week, so on and so forth. And then, you know, by nine o'clock, we're starting classes. So I'm in class from nine to two doing the teacher thing. So, you know, digital learning, we're, you know, getting them to work out, teaching them about, uh, the, this semester, we started off with wellness. So we're talking about sleep, we're talking about meditation, we're talking about, you know, just physical education. So the actual education part of it. Um, now, 12, uh, two o'clock hits, school's out. 
now I kind of shift gears from, you know, Jonathan Clark, the teacher to more, you know, Jay Clark, the jumper. So uh, I'm, you know, looking at social media, I do a terrible job of, of, you know, trying to stay on top of direct messages. But you know, those are the things I'm addressing. So now I'm responding to uh, DMs, I'm, I'm, you know, answering emails, uh, talking to, you know, on a, on a beautiful day, I'm talking to, you know, a company about a possible sponsorship or something like that. Um, so then, you know, from from that, that might take an hour or two. And then now I kind of have to start shifting my my attention towards, all right, I got to get a workout in. Um, so let's say Friday, I know I'm a dunk on Saturday. If not, nothing crazy, I'll get a quick, you know, hour, hour in, something light. And then, you know, enjoy the rest of my, my Friday night uh, with my family. Come Saturday morning, I'm waking up and now it's it's time to create content. It's time to kind of uh, train. And, and that's kind of my biggest, you know, focus and struggle where it's like, all right, you got you to gotta film a good workout, but you also have to get a good workout in. So that, you know, that's a process. Usually takes, you know, four to six hours as, as weird as that sounds. So like I'm dunking and I'm lifting, but at the same time, I'm trying to film and keep in mind that, you know, I'm trying to create something for an audience, but at the same time, I want to be true to myself and, you know, train the way I want to train. So I'll train, I'll lift, I'll do that. Um, then I, I come in here, come in the office and like try to put all of that together uh, and, you know, and kind of disperse all of that content via TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and like making sure I'm, you know, dotting all my I's, crossing all my T's in terms of hitting certain things. And now, you know, looking at, you know, one thing that I've done as well since quarantine hit is like really looking at it more of a business aspect. So now it's like, now I'm like, rather than just posting and hoping it goes viral, all right, what are the things that it needs to hit to do this? All right, what is, what, what is this thumbnail? So now it's like, I went, it went from just like, all right, taking a screenshot and putting a title to like typing something in and posting that on, on YouTube. So now it's like, all right, I'm sitting here spending an hour and a half editing this thumbnail because I know that, you know, that's the first thing that people see. And it's like, as much as like, I hate it, it's like, that's part of the game and I have to do that. So it's like, all right, editing this thumbnail, making it, you know, uh, appeal to this audience and like finding out the best title. Like, you know, I can't say like, even though it's like, to, in my mind, like I squatted 500 pounds today, like, yeah. or what's the best title that's going to get people's attention to click on it where it's like, I, you know, so it's like doing all of that. Um, and that that's kind of been, especially on Saturdays now has taken up a lot of my time, like Saturday, I've been doing this, this, this series called Saturdays are for the bounce, where I just share my training, share my routine of what I'm doing to become the best version of myself. And then it's split between putting out this content. Um, so it's like the, the dunking, like Saturday is like a full Jay Clark, the jumper day. And I, and I got to shout out my wife because she, um, she will take my son to her in-laws um, well, my in-laws um, to her parents' house and they'll, they'll hang out all day. And it's like, it gives me that, that, that freedom to kind of create and build and um, rinse, wash and repeat. And just kind of been doing that over and over and just kind of keeping in mind, like I'm trying to get better at, you know, the training thing. So like I'm pushing myself on that aspect, but then also with the content creation, you know, pushing myself in that aspect of like, all right, it needs to, it needs to look better than, two years ago it needs you need at some point like it, it yeah. needs to improve and understand that you know the same way i understand in vertical leap training you don't get a 50 inch overnight you're not going to just all of a sudden like boom you know have a million subscribers and and you know it, it's it's a process and you're just building so like that that's kind of been my days um recently i like it man i like that you're you're growing as like the entrepreneur side you know yeah you're bootstrapping the thumbnails and the the video editing, which are honestly two of the most annoying processes when you're starting off, right? Yes. Putting that all together. But that's what that, I think that's the most important thing. And I like that you said that you're not just posting the post. Yeah. You're posting with a purpose. You're maybe looking up what could go viral. Like you said, Definitely. what do the fans want to see? Because that's actually going to help you. So I just think a lot of creators don't do that. And that's why yeah. I want to highlight that because it, it's so, it's so key that you're doing it. So that's great. And staying on this whole topic, yeah. I have, there's certain questions in the podcast that I ask every single person, right? Because yeah. it's always good to hear different opinions on it. 
Yeah. You have a massive influence. You have a massive voice. Um, almost 400k on Instagram, just for example. You're verified. Once that blue check hits, it's different. Everyone's looking to you like, oh, this this is the guy. Yeah. Do you classify yourself as an influencer? Do you like using that word? How do you see it? So in in my real life, and, and it's so weird that I have to say it like that with, with social media and um, reality, especially being a teacher, because that was kind of one of the, um, going back my first year as a teacher, I hit 100K on Instagram. Um, my first year as a teacher, I ended up becoming verified. So all of this stuff was happening. Yeah. Um, and I had to kind of explain to them because also um, I was a first year teacher. First year teachers, if you guys don't know, you're, you're not making a lot of money. So it's like everyone thinks like, oh, you're verified. Oh, you have 100K on Instagram. You're rich all of a sudden. You do this. And I like, course, you know, that, yeah. that doesn't exist. So in, I will say in my real life, I don't like to view myself as an influencer because this idea of what I have as an influencer, you know, making tons of money just to post on social media. Social media is their, their you know, mean source of income they can, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of influence. Um, but I would say in a sense, yes, because, um, and if not influencer, definitely a content creator because dunking, um, dunking is not a sport. And, and, you know, that, that's a weird hot take. I, I love dunking. I, you know, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm wholeheartedly passionate about, but it's not a sport in the sense of, it does not have a, a federation like the, the the NBA or the NFL. It dunking majority of dunking lives on social media. Yeah. So in order to advance my career as a dunker, I have to get really good at being a content creator. And that was you know that was a big pill, a big tough pill to swallow because you know, I was an athlete. I grew up an athlete. I grew up playing these sports and it's like, all right, this is my, you know, this is my sport, if you will, even though it's not a sport. Um, so I had to kind of like reevaluate and like, all right, so you're a content creator. You're, you're, you know, you have to produce content. You have to, if you're not going viral, you're like, if I, if I post my regular routine of dunks and my regular routine of lifting, I will lose a ton of followers i will lose a ton of support and if i lose support companies aren't gonna want to sponsor me to do things i'm not going to get invited to certain dunk contests so i have to keep it fresh i have to i have to think in these ways and and create new content and, and you know put out certain things and and play a play the game a certain way if i want to be able to get invited to the best contest get you know when you know house of highlights hands out goodie boxes be within that uh category when nike does a campaign if i want to be considered i have to be you know i have to be a content creator i have to be an influencer if you will but i don't think um i i don't like to think of my life in that sense of just like social media dominating reality Please. because I, I i think um i think people have this this weird um misconception and obsession of like once you get to certain points you're making a certain amount of money but a majority of content creators it's this is a like it's a job in a sense it's not just like a get rich quick only a handful of people will like blow up and go viral and be overnight successes and make you know thousands of dollars a month on youtube and you know live that that amazing lifestyle everybody else is like in the trenches learning you know looking at analytics understanding what they're fans want and having to you know it's almost like it, it's funny because i i look at a lot of like when i when i consume uh social media for my enjoyment it's a lot of you know entrepreneurial stuff it's a lot of uh uh real estate passive income 10x all those all those types of things yeah. gary v like i that like that's the stuff that i i get excited about and a lot of people when when they step into that that realm and it's like oh you want to earn this passive income and it's like they're selling this pipe dream because it's not it's, it's not as easy as people think it is. It's work. And you have to, you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to, you know, you said grow, you have like, it's not, it's not just this, oh, I'm going to do this. And now I have a million dollars coming in and stuff like that. So um, in a sense, yes and no, because yes, I have to think in that sense of, of you know, influencer, content creator space, 
but no, because it doesn't, like, I understand that it doesn't exist that way for everybody. And especially in my situation, I, I can't devote a hundred hours a week to content creating because I, ha I have a full-time profession. I have a teacher I, and I have goals and dreams with that as well. Like I want to, my goal one day is to become a principal. So like I put a lot of time in, in to making that dream happen as well. So it's like, like I'm dancing the line with it. I, I love it. And I love that you're not getting stuck, you know, sucked into the social media bubble and that you're also building things outside of what your social media presence is. Cause that's yeah. so important. Like you said, you have dreams to become a principal and other things, which is great. So staying on that a little bit, you kind of just touched on it. I don't know if you're going to classify it as a disadvantage. You're probably yeah. in another way, which is great, but yeah, you're right. The average, all your other content creators, they're not teachers. They're not trying to be principals. They're only trying to be better than you or yeah. the other dunker and, and, and be a full-time creator and get the deal with Nike and, and sign yeah. up the deal and whatever. Is it a disadvantage to you or how do you view that? Yeah. So it's, it's, and it's, it's both in certain situations because one thing that I, I truly messed up on my first year was I tried to keep my world separate and I, I did it for a specific, specific reason of, I didn't want to be labeled as the dunker teacher. Like I wanted to be one, one of the big things that I would always say every year um, when people come into my classroom like if you don't know me already on social media, I would expect, I would just lay all of that out. I have this amount of followers. This is, you know, this, I have a blue check, but I am your teacher. When you step in this classroom, I am not Jay Clark, the jumper. I am Mr. Clark. And I used to, I used to hold that. Like I used to hold true to that. The one of the, the number one things I used to give detention out. And I rarely gave detention out was when people would call me Jay Clark, the jumper during school hours, because it's not like, I've worked hard. I've gotten my master's degree. I got a teaching yes. credential. I went to school and earned that, that right to be a teacher. But I would say, so my, it was either my first or second year. We, we had a pep rally and they kind of called me out on the spot where it was like, all right, Mr. Clark's going to dunk for us. And I was like, oh, great. And like, I ended up dunking. It went viral. It went on sports yes. center and all this other I crazy know. stuff. Yep. So in, in a weird sense, I, I kind of like, and, and I always sit down and, and, you know, talk to my wife because she, she gives me another perspective of, you know, what I do from just not, from not my own perspective. And she's like, it's not a bad thing to bring that stuff in. So like, I ended up embracing it, you know, you know, for the longest I was a slam dunking science teacher and that, that helped me grow in a sense. Um, so in that, in that gimmick of being a teacher and a dunker, it helps me because people respect the hard work that I put in as a dunker and a teacher. And it, and kind of, you know, it, it's my, it's my little gimmick um, to help me stand out in the sense of content creating. It is a definite disadvantage because what I, like, I truly believe like when I'm sitting here from nine to two teaching, if I were to put that energy into creating content or, you know, going out and driving to, let's say, like I could, you know, drive to Sacramento and, and uh, meet up with Cell and, yeah, exactly. you know, and, and collab with him yeah. every other week, like definitely help my channel grow, drive to LA and collab with all the dunkers in LA or, yeah. you know, take the energy, uh, you know, whatever, let's say I might, I take my YouTube earnings and I fly to a certain place and create a video and that does well. And, you know, you Build just up. keep reinvesting and you kind of keep growing. Like, I, I definitely think I, it could happen. Um, but so, so I think in that sense, it's a disadvantage because I can't create at the same rate as other content creators, but um, everything's based off of perspective. So like, I have to, I have to view it as, you know, it's my advantage in that sense of like, all right, this is my gimmick. And, and I just have to keep working harder until like, you know, I, I burst through a certain point where it's like, all right, rather than, you know, having to fly to content creators, get maybe getting content creators come to me. And now it's like, all right, they, you know, they're stepping in my classroom, step, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Exactly. I think you being a teacher, man, and like having your master's is just such a, like I said, a positive advantage for you. Yeah. I think over time you are going to find really dope ways to like, maybe like you just said, I actually just pictured in my mind, like a YouTube show where you brought in one influence at a time to your classroom. And you guys, exactly. And, and, and like that, I don't know. That, yeah. That's, that's definitely one of those things where it's like starting to like merge, merge the, the worlds together and kind of bring, um, bring them together for a positive, a positive way.
Yeah. No, I love it, man. So staying on the, the being a teacher thing, we came out. I think it was. I don't know if it was last year. It was. It was. It was. So it was last year. It feels so oh, long okay. ago. Okay. Yeah. It was last school year. So it was. It was. Uh, 19, I want right? to say October, November. But 2019, right? 2019. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Last, so 2019, 2020 school year. So yeah, if you guys don't know, like me, Jazz, Dev, uh, we can, we went out to collab and make content. But the coolest thing about the experience was being able to sit in the classroom, yeah, and watch you teach and just see like the school you worked at and all that kind of stuff. And then after you know, you guys did your collab on the content. But yeah, seeing you teach was like you said. When I saw that, I was like, it's not the respect isn't the right word, but it's like I just got a deeper understanding of you as a human. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this guy. Yeah. That's why, like I say, like, just more than a dunker, like more than a social media person, whatever you want to call it. Like, this guy's, yeah. like, you're really impacting youth, like, you know, outside of social media. You're in the classroom t- t- talking to them, which, which I really respected. So yeah. you kind of t- touched on it a little bit, how you became a teacher, which is a cool story, yeah. being a sub and just kind of falling, it, falling in love with it. How has, co- how did COVID impact everything for you guys last year? Are you still teaching online right now every day? Yeah. So, um, when, when COVID initially hit, um, I was at a, I was at the school district. So you were at the school that I was at, uh, yeah. Granite Ridge intermediate. Um, I was still there. Um, so COVID hit, everything kind of went on hold. Uh, we were in the middle of track season, like track season stopped. Yeah. We kind of had to sit down and we ended up going, like we ended up, this is before like the, you know, stay at home orders and all that stuff. We went, we ended up going back to school, the teachers ended up going back to school and kind of planning out. We built out packets to send home. Uh, and it was supposed to be like, it was one packet. We were going to come back, like revisit this after spring break. So we, we, that packet took us to spring break. I would, I would kind of hold weekly zoom meetings with my students. And I was kind of, I made myself available at any time they sent emails and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, Corona kind of continued. So we were like, all right, this is going to the end of the school year. Um, at the time, the, the education system was like, we can't fail students for not doing work. So like, if their grade was where, if their grade was comfortable, they technically did not have to kind of, you know, continue to, you know, submit con- like work, but if their grade wasn't, they can continue to work to build their grade up. So like the, the amount of students that I saw at that kind at that point kind of just drastically dropped. Um, so it was kind of like, it was like a, it was a really sad uh, ending to the school year. And on top of that, at the time, there was a job opening for PE teacher and tra- head track coach at my wife's school. So it was kind of like a, it was like a dream position. Yeah. And I shot my shot and I got an interview. It was all through Zoom and everything went well and I got the job. So I ended up switching schools in the middle of the quarantine Wow, okay. uh, so I went from, yeah, I went from the eighth grade science teacher to now teaching high school PE and being a head track and field coach for Bullard High School, uh, the school that I'm at, at my wife. So we work at the same school um, and it, it, it's, my mindset was like going into the school year, this was going to be a, like the, the amazing setup. We found a daycare that was on the way to school. So like we're, we're all like planned out and ready to go. And then, you know, August comes around and we're still quarantine so we started the school year my wife and I made the decision we're just going to keep my son on uh, at home we get to watch him grow save money it's a win-win um, and we've been doing that we you know we were going to go till December we we're thinking like all right we'll be done then and then you know as we get closer to December like we're still in quarantine so you know right now everything is 100% online we actually I was actually able to practice with my team at first. Uh, we had a uh, protocol for like creating pods and, you know, you get yeah. to, you know, at least get to campus and get to see students and connect with them and train. And, and for me, like that's obviously, I think a lot of teachers love teaching because you get to connect with students. Um, but right now we're on like our, our um, federation, the CIF shut down everything. So, you know, we're not allowed to practice where everything is at, everything's online. Um, and until the state of California kind of lifts the stay at home order, we're going to be in this situation. Um, and until then, so it's, it's know when, yeah, yeah, we don't know when it's, it's, it's one of those weird things where it's like, it's unfortunate, but 
well, like I said, everything, everything's based off of perspective. You got to just see the positives of, about it. So it's like, um, I get to stay at home and train. I get to be with my son every single day, every single waking moment. Um, and, you know, you get to just kind of like look at everything that's going on. And, and it's obviously helped me a little bit with streamlining the Jay Clark, the jumper and, you know, Jay Clark, Jonathan Clark, the teacher, because, mm-hmm. you know, let's say we have a 15 minute break transitioning classes. I don't have to physically get up and go anywhere because my, my classroom is right here. So it's like, I'm here 15 minute break. I can actually like check DMS. I can, I can do this. I can post this. Um, yeah. And now I can get back to this mode and stuff like that. So it's, it's, you know, just looking at the positives of the situation and trying to make the best of, of everything that's going on. Yeah. I think it's so important to find the positives and everything going on right now in the world. So yeah. that's you. So that's cool, man. First of all, congrats on the new job. It's nice to see you tra- transition from the, Thank you. the, the, the science teacher to now PE teacher, track yeah. and field co head track and field coach right up your alley, which I think is great yeah. for you for the next X amount of years. So yeah, perfect transition into the growth, the growth section of our, of the podcast. And, just talking about, you know, the different stages of being an entrepreneur, you know, you're obviously going to experience growth in so many different ways, which you have been doing. So I think the way I classify this is like, you know, myself, Deb, Marcellus, you know, Ryan, all these other guests I've had, like a lot of us are in this stage right now. We're in the growth stage Yeah. We're we're, you know, 20 plus something years old. We've had a lot of learning. We're always learning, but now we're moving to this growth stage of our life to see how much further we can go to get us closer to those, you know, those championships. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is obviously we talked about it a little bit briefly just recently is content creation, you know, one of the most important things, you know, like I said, for you outside of your teaching job to get yeah. the brand deals, to get the money, to grow the YouTube, all this kind of stuff that goes with just adding extra income to you and your family. So do you have any tip? I guess I would ask you is, do you have any tips and tricks? Like there are going to be a lot of people who are, who look up to you. Like I love Jay Clark. He's one of my favorite dunkers. You know, do you have any tips and tricks for them? To handle content creation yeah so one of one of the big things that i i think is um you have to remove your ego from the situation i think early on in everyone's career um especially as a dunker from a dunker standpoint you might do a dunk that's really cool that people might enjoy or you think people might enjoy it and it might not go you know according to your plan remove your ego from the situation you have to look at yourself as a business. And, and I think the problem with dunking social media content, it's because the business is you as a person, people become, you know, that much more invested in what they've done. And it's almost to a, a point of getting mad at others because of just not, it not received. Like, I, like when I, when I look at like content going viral, there's people that will like, oh, there's a specific formula to make this. If you do this, this, and this, and this, it'll go viral. And it's like, I will do this, this, and this, and I put it out and nobody will watch it and nobody will uh, consume it. And it's like, well, what did I do wrong? Like that I did everything that was, it's like, no, it's like, you can't, realistically, you can't predict virality to a T. You know, there, there's sometimes there, there's this X factor that, you know, someone might post a dunk and I've seen it. Someone will post like a basic, simple dunk and it'll go crazy like all the channels will pick it up and you're sitting there like what i've done this in my sleep i can go outside and do this right now so i think one it's like taking your your ego out of the the situation and just produce content um for me it's easier to produce content that i enjoy that way like if it doesn't go well it doesn't i enjoyed it like so just kind of keep it it keeps me producing the content that i want to produce so it's like ego needs to be removed um, and another thing is patience. I think people look at, um, it's funny, I follow this, uh, this guy, Chris Sane, on um, YouTube, and he's a, he's a stock investor. And one of his sayings is like, people always look at the end result and never, they never uh, enjoy the process where it's like, people look at, at some of the dunks that I've done. And it's like, they always want to ask me like, what, what did it take to get there? And it's like, I'm 32 years old. I legitimately started training when I was like, seriously training when I was 14. Um, so everything that I've done up until this point is the years that I've put into it. It's not just a like overnight thing. So it's like, you have to be like, in a sense, patient and wait your turn. Like I'm watching certain content creators, like go, go viral. And now they're like the hottest things out and people get mad. And it's like, um, why are they making it? Like, you know, people ask me like, oh, why don't you have a hundred, hundred K subs on YouTube? 
it's not my time yet. You know, I'm going to just keep producing content. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. I, it's like, yes, I'm going to have an ego about it because it's me, but you, you got to remove yourself from that. You got to, you just got to keep producing your content, keep doing your thing. And when it's your time to make it, just make sure that you're pr producing what you want. Because one thing I've also noticed is people blow up doing content that they don't want to do. And then now they're a slave uh, to the content that they have like you're not going to be able to grow unless you do that like like the like i'll see like the dumb stuff like the pranks and all that other like and then you blow up and now it's like you can't you like if, if your passion is to make music and you put music out no one wants to hear your music they subscribe to you because they want to see you do dumb pranks and they want to see you see so it's like get remove your ego do what you want to do and just be patient and like eventually your your time will come and if if everything is set up for uh and align the way you want it to do it then like you know my goal when i blow up big i'm going to be producing the content that i enjoy doing so then it's like a win-win because i get to wake up and do what i love and now it's you know providing the the income that you know i need to do the the things that i want to do so passion it's project, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Def, exactly passion project yep no and I, I like that and if you guys are young and listening like don't pitch and hold yourself into you know, just trying to go viral on TikTok, but like, by, like you said, by doing stupid stuff because yeah. you're going to probably go viral and then, you know, you'll be known for that for X amount of years. And <laughs> like, it, it is tough to get yourself out of that. Yeah. To like, you said, you said like people don't understand too, like you, you could have a million right now on Instagram. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're going to have a million on YouTube because it's a different platform. Yes. YouTube, YouTube's, YouTube's also like a different beast. It's just like, it's a different beast that people don't get that. That's why when I heard that question, I'm like, man, we get that question all the time. Yeah. Why don't you have a million yet? Why don't you have 3 million over here? I'm like, man, it's like, it's just a process where we love where we're at and we're just going with the flow, you know, Definitely. We're building. And like you said, it's like, stay patient, but just be consistent with the content and the quality and, and you'll get there. You yeah. know, eventually you'll get there. So, um, pressure comes in all different forms. And I think a lot of different content creators deal with it differently, whether it's mentally, physically, however they it may come up. You are very unique in the sense that I don't know if you feel pressure to put out content to match, whether it be your rivals or just for yourself. Do you feel that at all for the social? Um, I would say to an extent, yes. Um, I think as a dunker, like I said, because dunking, like I said before, I, I don't think it's a sport. I think it, you know, it lives primarily on social media. So it's like when a dunker does a brand new dunk and all dunkers can kind of attest to this. When let's say someone does a let's say Jordan Kilgannon, you know, comes yeah, out and does a, a 720 between the legs. <laughs> I'm going to have like first I follow the guy. So I'm going to yeah. see the I'm going to see the dunk. Throughout the entire week, I might get 500 DMs. Yo, did you see this? Yo, he's the best dunker ever. Like dude, he's better than you. When are you going to do this? Can right. you do this? And it's like, so, you, so like there, there, there's that pressure and that's something. So like how we were talking about growth, this is something that I've kind of like sat with and kind of like coped with in a sense of like, you know, being compared to other dunkers and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, as of recently, I've decided, you know, like, listen, you know, like I said, remove the emotion, stay in your lane. Like, so like when I get those messages, like, man, that dunk is crazy. Cause that dunk is crazy. If, you know, if, if someone did a 720 between the legs. So I think like I myself have, you know, and it, it's an active process. I've been trying to remove myself from like what other dunkers or, or like the put, put that pressure to create um, in that sense of like comparing to other people. But um, there is a pressure to kind of create content because I do believe, or I feel in my heart that, you know, I can be at a better place. I, I won't say I deserve to be at a better place, but I believe that, you know, if I continue putting in work with my, with my platform, my platform could be that, you know, million across the board platform where it's like, you know, you know, hoping that Nike wants to do a uh, de deal post with me to where it's like, I want to be, you know, a dunker that is legit sponsored by Nike. I, you know, or like an Adidas or whoever, what, whatever organization brand where it's like, you know, I'm, you know, I don't need, so I can, I can step past social media where it's like, 
dunking lives on social media but um and it's funny because i i did uh one of my grad school projects on this where it's like i look at i looked at skateboarding and look at like where skateboarding is now like skateboarding does live on social media but you know nigel houston has a has a you know nike sponsorship p uh p rod like those guys those guys make a living doing what they do they they make a living as skateboarders if they never post it again on social media um obviously eventually like you know nike yeah, yeah. Will pull, pull the deal and stuff like that but hypothetically like social media is not their means to an end like they have they have their means to an end via you know shoe deals and uh, other sponsorships and things like that and it's like i was like dunking can be that dunking you know could create a federation where nice. now it, i can can say it's a sport where people are traveling and and competing and and, and things like that so um there, there is that pressure, but I think, you know, you know, talk the, the way we've been talking with the growth, especially it's like, it, it's going to take time. Like that was the, 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 another pill I had to swallow where it's like, it's going to get there, but it's not going to get there when you want it to get there. You're going to have to just keep working every single day. And then, you know, maybe a year from now, maybe two years, maybe 10 years from now. Right. Yep. Then, then, then it'll be there. And it's like, as long as I, you know, make that happen, I think that'll, that'll be, that'll be cool. So it's like, I, I, I try not to put that pressure in a sense. Cause I know it's going to take some time. I get, I like that. You just keep your head down and keep working. Definitely. And then just kind of like building on that a little bit. We just t- touched on a little bit in terms of when someone gets a crazy dunk, you have haters in your comments. Yeah. H- hating is a, a massively toxic part of social media, yeah. but it also comes with the job. Like you being who you are, you have to deal with it. It's, yeah. you know, it's not going to be perfect. So the question I have for you, and this is literally just for the listeners to hopefully learn from is what do you do? How do you deal with the hate that comes in your inbox? Yeah. So, so, and it's funny because when I first, first started where I'm talking like 5k to 10k, uh, Instagram followers, there was this, this dude, and I think he was from China. I like, I don't know where he was from, but man, this kid was like religiously in my, in my channel, just like critiquing everything about me. And it like, it really got under my skin. It really bugged me almost to the point where it was like affecting how I did things. Like, like if that kid honestly would say something like, and I was, especially when I was young too, yeah. when someone did a dunk and someone would tag me, I would go out, I would go to the, the, the gym the next day and like start working on that dunk just because mm-hmm. it's like, I was, I was that, you know, and as I, as I got older and more mature, it's, it's, you really just got to stay in your lane. Um, you got to understand that, you know, one, the world does not revolve around you and it does not matter anyway. So like, if there is that like hate and if there is that uh, negativity, I like you, it's, it's all about perspective. So it's like, yeah. so if you went out of your way to comment something negative on my page, that means you had to click on my page, watch my video, consume my content and then comment. Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all the social media channels don't look at negative comments as a negative comment they look at it as a comment they look at it as a click they look at it as an impression so it's like negative positive it's like all right i got you know i got someone else to content uh comment on my content so it's like all right let's you know something now nowadays like i laugh at it because like i can comment back and say something and now i got you back on my page i got you back back on my channel so it's like it's it's one of those things that it's kind of funny um when i look at like real hate where it's like someone like a dunker says something or does something i just i just think of it as like it's not um you know it doesn't matter you know it, it's, it's one of those things like i know the work that i put in i know my my place i know my skill level um and like i, I can't dwell on you know someone saying something negative i can't dwell on that because like like in real life if someone says something to you, like you, you're never going to be everyone's favorite person. You're never going to be, you know, the most popular all the time in every single situation. So it's like, you just got to continue to do what you do and, and, you know, forget the rest, like stay in your lane and just keep grinding. Excellent. As always, all the questions I've asked you, excellent answers. <laughs> I mean, as I would expect for someone like yourself. So this is pretty good. <laughs> it's like really good. Like not only for me to listen, but I think for the listeners. So it's awesome. man. Yeah. A uh, couple more things just kind of continue to build. Everything's kind of flowing nicely right now is the audience. And we touched on this a little bit before too, just defining, you know, 
what videos to put out. You're looking at analytics. You're looking at so many different things to understand what content to create that, you know, your fans will love and hopefully new people will love. Yeah. So do you, and this is actually just a question in general. Do you know the type of audience you need to build for the long term? Like the type of people that love to watch dunks or love to watch your content? So, and, and it's funny because I always, I always look at uh, analytics and I, I've been watch, watching with my wife and like trying to break stuff down. So a majority of my social media platforms across all my platforms, majority, when I say majority, I'm talking like 90% and up, 90% male and in yep. the age range of like 14 to 24, like across all my platforms, that's, you know, when you look at who's dunking, that's a majority of dunkers, right? Yep. So one of the big things that I've been trying to do is, is try to grow my, in order to grow my brand, if I want to get to a million followers on any of my platforms, it can't be 90% male. It's going to have to, that, that percentage yep. is going to have to come down. I'm going to have to bring women involved. I'm going to have to bring in, you know, younger and older people so it's just like one of the things that i've been looking at is is you know and juggling and struggling with is how do i do that while keeping true to myself because i i'm wholeheartedly determined to make it like i want to get to those levels i want to get to those you know arbitrary numbers and i throw out a million as an arbitrary number yeah um, a lot of people put it at like it, it, the number does not matter but you know i want to make it doing what I feel true to myself. I want to put out content that I'm comfortable. Um, you know, when I'm 50 years old and I look back and, and I did that and it's like, I, I'm glad I did that. I, I'm glad I didn't, I don't want to look back and be like, I can't believe I did that, but oh, it, you know, it made me big and stuff like that. So um, I, I, I think it's, it's, that's where the merge of Jay Clark, the jumper and Jonathan Clark, the teacher have to come in, in terms of like, a lot of my students say you're, you know, you're very motivational. You, you give out a lot of gems and wisdom. So it's like using my platform to motivate. So motivation is going to be the, the avenue. Cause I don't want people to think of, you know, dunking just as dunking. Dunking is just the goal that I set out that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. So that's the, you know, you're watching me achieve my goals, but your goal doesn't have to be dunking. Your, your goal can be, you know, I want to run, you know, sub seven minute mile. Um, I want to be the first female to, you know, do this, whatever, whatever your goal is, it's, you know, it's going to take the same amount of grit, determination, passion, all those, all those qualities. Um, so that's, that's where I'm trying to kind of more, you know, branch out. Um, and that, and that's been a process, you know, me learning that and working on it. Cause I, I think, yeah, you know, being, being somewhat of a perfectionist, like I'll, I'll, create something and not like it and it'll just sit in like a hard drive somewhere or sit in my phone because it's like uh so it's like being being human and being open like everybody else getting you know practicing what I preach so just like putting it out there and, and you know trying to get uh what's the word uh just trying to get everybody to kind of see that process you know try to try to reveal um the struggles in, in a sense no, I like that. And something I actually, I just learned this uh, from, you know, R2B ball. He was on my yeah. last guest. I just had him on like two days ago. Okay. And he told me like something for longevity for, cause we were talking about the same question. Like, you know, what's the key for longevity in these social media creators and accounts? And he was like, I think he said he learned it from Gary V or one of the other guy, bigger guys. He was like, you know, the, the, the longest accounts have, you know, either all three or, or all of the, or one of these learn, learning, motivation, entertainment. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So you're, you're teaching, you're, you're motivating and you're providing entertainment through dunk. So I think you have yeah. all three, which is great for the long run, which a lot of people aren't able Definitely. to get on. So that that's perfect. And just kind of building on this, you've, you've actually had like a ton of like mini breakthroughs, like throughout your whole life and, and massive ones as well. But one that I want to go back to, cause I think you found a bunch of breakthroughs in this as well was the injuries. Yeah. So we, just, you kind of mentioned just briefly what they were, but can you kind of go into a little more about the two yeah. injuries and like, let's so, talk about this process. Definitely. So in, I think it was 2016, uh, summer of 2016. And it's funny. Cause it's like, we're talking breakthroughs uh, that summer. I actually had a trial with the Harlem Globetrotters and um, I killed it. And, and one of the big things that I was nervous about with that was, it was a basketball trial. 
you know, I said previously, yep. I did two tryouts and I didn't make the team. So like going into a tryout, like I was already in my mind, like, dude, like I, I didn't make my high school basketball team. What am I going to do? You know, playing professional basketball in the sense of like, and I know some people don't look at it as professional basketball. Like you travel the world, they pay you. That's your profession. So like in my mind, like that's professional basketball. So, you know, you know, I, like, like anything that I do, uh, you know, with a, with a science background, you know, you go, you like, you look and you analyze. So it's like, I looked at what they were looking for. We went to the show and I'm looking at the qualities that they're looking for. Yes. They want skilled basketball players. Obviously I wouldn't be there if I didn't, you know, they saw me and they offered the trial based off of my skill, but it's like, they looked at certain qualities. So I, I, you know, I did all of that. I killed the tryout. Um, and I left knowing like I probably made the team that that uh two weeks later there was a celebrity basketball game in venice beach um and you know (laughs) venice beach is a is a different animal in terms of just how they run uh events and stuff like that i would just say that like there's a lot there's a lot of moving pieces so like the game is on there's a dunk uh there's a dance competition so like we've been sitting around for like an hour um you know going back to what we're saying like i'm like I'm not a spring chicken where I could just like get up and just like play without warming up. So second half starts, I'm not warm. I'm super tight. We're just, I'm running up and down the court. Uh, The other team uh, was killing us. We were just playing terrible and I was getting mad. Um, And I remember Myrie came down, Remix came down and did some like ridiculous, like 360 windmill in game. And like the crowd is going crazy. We're losing. I was like, all right, if we're going to lose, I'm at least one up one of the dunks. So someone came down fast break they threw it off the glass and i just i left the ground and i like i got up caught it between the legs and i went to like like not even dunk it like i tried to like break the rim so like i the ball like barely hit the back of the rim and it ricocheted and it just took off the other way mind you i'm going this way so like i'm like head at the rim watching the ball go like this and i'm falling from the sky and i did i was not watching my landing I hit the ground, Uh, my leg just stuck on the ground, didn't move while all my momentum was going this way. And um, so what they said was I I subplexed it uh, where it's like it dislocated and then like jumped back in. So um, it went like that. And uh, so dislocated, I dislocated my leg, uh, tore my ACL, tore my meniscus and sprained like every ligament around the knee. and like, that was a feeling I'd never felt before. And like, I like, so like, I, I thought I, at the time I thought I sprained my knee. I get a, I get a, I get a call like the next week. Uh, they told me I made the team, the, the globe trotters. So I made the team. So I'm like, oh yeah, man. Like my knee's not, my knee's not, my knee's not, uh, not, I, it's just a sprain. I'll be, I'll be ready or whatever. And like, i have been like trying to train and recover and just, it didn't feel n- like nothing felt right. It was like, there was so much pain. And I, I was, I was, uh, I was working a job where I was training kids at the time. And uh, we, we'd gotten in the pool cause it was like in the summer, it was super hot. And I got in the pool and my leg was kind of like floating. And I was like, I, I need to go to the doctor cause something's wrong. I went to the doctor like immediately. It was like, yeah, you, you like, and they listed off all the injuries and stuff like that. So like, I had to call the globe trotters and like, tell them like tore my ACL. I was wrecked. Um, it, it was like, it was devastating. Right. So they told me like, we really like you. Uh, let us know when you'll be back and you know, the, the spots yours. So I was like, all right, I'll be back in six months. Uh, and every single day I like, I, I started, uh, I started rehab, like I rehab was, uh, I think prescribed to me like two days a week. Um, and I asked the physical therapist, can I come in every day? I came in every single day and it was like six months to the day. Like he cleared me to go play and wow. like, uh, six months, like it was like six months. Like I want to say like six months and like two weeks, like I was, you know, in Arkansas had a globe trotter Jersey on and I was like touring the country. And it was, it was, uh, it was one of those things like that, that injury, just taught me what I can do if I really put my mind to it. It, it taught me, it taught me determination um, after that injury um, because I did not even finish the season. They actually, the Globe Trotters actually sent me home because they could tell I was like babying the knee a lot. And like, like Globe Trotters, they travel every single day. They play every single day. Right. And on Saturdays they have two a days. So it's like, it's a lot for you. It, it, it was, it was definitely tough on the body and, and it was, um, uh, so I, I went home 
and uh like but in my mind like i knew i could do anything like with the determination and also just had a, a new sense of appreciation of my gifts and my abilities and just being willing to like hone in on that like it's one of the it's a weird thing to say that like tearing my acl was probably one of the best things for my dunk career because it made me appreciate the hard work that i put in and and you know like even when i go into the gym today it's like you can't waste that workout because there might be a day you never get you know there might be a day like i can go out to tomorrow and dunk and tear my acl and be done for forever so it's like appreciate it now and enjoy it and then um the next injury it's it's weird i can't tell you when i did it but um it was two summers ago two two or three summers ago which is crazy because it was like right it was right out it was right after um or well, right before you guys came so yeah, it was right yeah it was yeah that whole right. summer that whole summer i was competing and like after after dunk sessions, like my knee would just swell up and it would hurt. And I was like, something's, something's not right. Uh, like, I, I know, like, I know my body, something's not right, but I kept pushing. I, I, you know, I had big contests that summer, Vegas, China, I think I went to China twice that summer. And also just sitting on a plane for 16 hours, like was not the best for my knee either. Um, of so I, I ended up going home and yeah, I ended up going home and getting an MRI and they were like, yeah, your meniscus is, is torn. Um, so I was like, well, that makes perfect sense because like this, this hurts. And it's funny because when I tore my ACL initially, I told myself if I ever had to get knee surgery again, I would, I would quit. Like I would retire because like it's, it's the, the physical is bad but the mental of like keeping yourself locked in through those injuries is even is is even harder so um but it's weird because like when it happened like like i said that early on like when that seed was planted like it was like all right it's go time like you got to lock in i know you don't want to do this i know you don't want to straighten your leg i don't i know you don't want to bend your leg and it's like just kind of like i just kept doing that and then like like you know fa flash forward to today like my, my knee feels amazing um ish uh, it never it never feels the same but yeah. you know it, it it's definitely good enough to to do like the things that i'm doing and um like it's it's one of those things like injuries really they're lessons they're 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 uh either you know telling you to slow down telling you to stop and smell the roses showing you revealing your true grit and determination it's 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 one of those weird things where it's like Yes, they suck. Yes, they're um, a nuisance and annoying, but they're also there to show you how strong you you possibly can be. Absolutely. So the injuries both on the same knee? Same knee. Left knee, right knee? Right knee. So, and, right. that, and that's and kind of one of the weird off. things. One more question? Sorry, I was gonna say you take off, you take off more on two feet, right? Yeah, so, so as a dunker, I'm a left-right dunker. Left. Yeah. Um, before tearing my ACL, I, I was probably, and, and I still think I am one of the most versatile dunkers in that I can do anything uh, plant-wise. But when I jump off of one leg, primarily it's my left leg. So that's that's kind of why, okay. like when I, when I tore my ACL, I actually dunked three months after the surgery, that's but it was off, it was off of my left leg. So it's like, all I had to do was kind of hobble up to the rim and, and kind of like put it down. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, I've been working on the right leg and getting it stronger. So I've, I've been able to dunk off of my right leg on my rim and my rim uh, outside is 10 feet, four inches. Yeah. So I've been able to do a, a right only dunk. So it's like, it's that, that right leg is getting a lot stronger. Um, um, but definitely it's one of those things where it's like, because of my takeoff style, tearing my right leg was probably for the better in a sense. Like if I tore my left, I, yeah, I wouldn't be the least same dunker. Still and do, and do some things. Definitely, like, yes. Completely shutting down. And then yeah. just touch on the quickly or, ho or however you want, because even I'm interested, I know the guests will be, the listeners will be too, is what was, when you rehab the injuries, right? Yeah. Is it a lot of physio? Like what, what, what went into it the most that really helped you? Was it the fact that you had a master's in kinesiology so you could, you know, you knew how to break it down and get back stronger? Um, I, I think it's one of those, it's one of those weird things. Um, being a coach is probably one of the best things, um, because what I preach to my athletes is you got to take it day by day. 
And it's like, you can't look at, um, one of my favorite sayings of all time is actually from Kung Fu Panda, Master Ugwe. He says, oh, yesterday, yeah. yesterday is history, tomorrow's a mystery, uh, but today's a gift. That's why it's called the present. So it's like, you really got to live in the moment. So like when I first tore my ACL, um, yeah, for, for about a week and a half, I wallowed. I sat in the room with the room dark and I was sad and, you know, listening to emo music and stuff like that and, and kind of got in and, you know, get it, got in my head. But once I got out of that, it was like, all right, wake up. You got to ice. You got to stretch. You got to do this. You got to drink water. You got to go to physical therapy. You got to do everything he tells you to do. You got to go home. You got to stretch. You got to, you got to get sleep. You got to eat right. And I just did that every single day. And I just focused on the day at hand every single day. And then like at the end of the week, when he tested, uh, you know, how much I, my knee bent or how much I could straighten my leg, it was better. So I just did that every single day. And I just took little wins every single day. Um, it's like, you know, people say like, oh, 1% better. Like I was okay with taking like half a percent better. And it was just like, you do that every single day. Don't worry about what happened in the past. Don't worry about what's, what's coming up in the future. Just really focus on the moment. And then, you know, like I said, six months to the day, like I was like clear to actually like play sports and do things. So um, really focusing on the exact moment and not worrying about anything else. I, I, I love it, man. Your story is so unique. <laughs> it, it really is, bro. And it's, it's just a story of like perseverance and it's dope. So going to slowly transition into this final stage of like the championship and kind of just see like really, you know, where you're trying to take things. And as we get into it, actually, the first thing I want to ask you, because I wrote it down from our, when we first started talking was the Olympic trials. So yeah. first of all, really cool that you did that. Um, I, I didn't actually know, know that when that didn't happen, I believe you said you came 17th, you know, whatever top three makes it Yeah. from there, you didn't want to pursue it again. Or, you know, what was your thought process behind? Cause obviously making Olympics would have. Yeah. Everything. So so that was kind of, yeah, uh, at the, at the time when I was, let's say when I was 20 Olympics was like my number one thing that I wanted to do. Um, part of it was like uh, the whole, you know, full circle redemption story of like, Oh, I didn't make it in basketball, but now I'm one of the best athletes in the world. Um, that was something, you know, track had been at that time. Now the biggest portion of my life, it was my identity. Jay Clark, the jumper actually does not stem from, uh, jumping as in dunking Jay Clark, the jumper stems from Jay Clark, the high jumper and triple jumper. Like that's, that's what, that's initially what it was. Um, so yeah, that was the thing. And I think, um, when, when I didn't make the team, like I said, you know, you, I, I time to time, like just go into that mode or they go sad and like get into my feelings and then get out and move on. So like the plan when I came back in 2013 was to be, a track and field athlete. When I initially started training, I was going to be a triple jumper again. I was, you know, I was going to make this, you know, this comeback story in track and then dunking. I found dunking and like dunking just kind of tugged at my heart a lot more. And when I think, you know, obviously when I, when I was struggling to do that dunk and I, I didn't want to go to track practice and then I started getting invited to dunk contest. That was kind of when I was like, uh, I, I enjoy this. Um, I, cause I, I had thought I love track and field and I do love track and field. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But I, the things I enjoyed about the idea of being a professional track athlete, I do as a dunker, I wanted to travel the world. I get to travel the world. I wanted to, you know, be respected for my athletic accomplishments. I get, you know, I'm, I'm getting those things in dunking and I can still, I'm a, tr I'm a head track and field coach. I still get to like live in the track world and connect with the jumpers and they they have a an appreciation for what i do as a dunker because it's like it's it's very similar in how you approach training and how you approach the sport in general so um i i get the best of both worlds with that so it was like one of those things where um and not to mention the the top two americans have like <laughs> gone off and done like some of the most crazy feats in track and field really? in triple jump yeah so like wow. uh, and it's funny because yesterday the uh the indoor world record was broken the the first human wow. to ever go 18 meters indoors like happened yesterday so it's like i am wholeheartedly comfortable looking at that and like that's amazing <laughs> like i can i you know i can i can appreciate that i'm gonna stay in my lane with the dunking 
but it's like dude that's that's crazy and it's like I was talking to my um college track coach about that today it's like if the Olympics happen this year we might see a situation where fifth place would have normally won any other Olympic games but because of the talent pool is so ridiculous like it's fifth place so it's like I, I definitely chose a terrible era to become, you know, an elite level triple jumper because like the competition was just like loaded. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I found my lane. I enjoy my lane. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. Just, just for reference, uh, you said 18 meters was the world record, right? Indoors. Yeah. 18, I think it's 18 seven. Yeah. So just for reference for us and the listeners, like what, what was the longest you've jumped indoor? Uh, indoor, I jumped 16 meters 30. So I think it's like 50, 50 uh, 53 feet, but this guy jumped 59 feet. So it's just like, wow. that's the whole nother body down. Yeah. That, yeah that, that's, that's, that it's, it's, <laughs> it's next level. So um, outdoors, outdoors, my best was 1650. Um, and like I said, that's, that's good enough for 17th in the United States. Yeah. Not the world, the United States. So, uh, <laughs> There's some crazy athletes out there, man. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So for the whole championship championship section, you know, it's trying to understand, you know, what are you working towards? You know, what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. It's basically, I just want to understand, even though I already understand all your motivations, just kind of maybe go into it a little bit more and yeah. really understanding, you know, what, what is your why? So yeah. the first thing I'll say just for context for people is like, you know, Cause when I tell people like, Oh, we're going to talk about championships. It's like, you're not just going to have one championship right throughout your life. You may have a thousand. I may yeah. have a million. Everyone's going to have a different amount. Yeah. Um, but going, you know, building off that, what is your why? Definitely. So my why has, has kind of been consistent, but has evolved throughout time. I'll say one of my, my first or a lot of my first championships came from track and field where um my freshman year i remember i high jump was kind of the thing that i wanted to do and uh obviously i was getting in shape for basketball but i started to like dabble in this high jump thing and um there was a uh, one of my classmates who made the basketball team and he was a high jumper as well so my first initial uh goal was to like i have to be better than him at something he can't have basketball over me and have high jump over me so freshman to sophomore year i worked to just be a better jumper than him better high jumper and uh then that year you know i i jumped my freshman year i jumped five four i jumped my height sophomore year i, I started to jump five feet ten inches and i remember telling uh, a group of my friends like all right i'm gonna jump six feet and one of my friends was like you're ne- you're never gonna jump six feet that's a, like you're never gonna do that and then my biggest why was like proving him wrong. Like, you can't tell me what I can't do. Um, and I ended up jumping like six feet going into my junior year. I started to jump like six, three, six, six. And like he, I, he ate his words and that was like a great feeling. So like initially my why had always been like doing what people told me I couldn't do. And that's why I said, like, if a dunker did a dunk, like I, the next day I was in the gym trying to do that dunk. So it was always based off of, kind of what people it was my my why was determined by other people and as I got older and more mature it needed to kind of evolve into what I deemed I could do so it's it's um one of my big uh hashtags and and slogans and motto is do the impossible and that initially started when my first dunk contest I tried a 360 double between the legs and the warm-ups knowing I wasn't close to doing it but I knew it would get the crowd reaction needed to kind of like get the crowd on my side um, to get going. And it was a relatively close attempt. And Billy who runs Dunkademics posted it on Instagram. and was like, do you guys think this is possible? And a lot of people said, no, it's impossible. No, it's impossible. And like, initially that's what triggered this whole, like, well, I'm gonna do the impossible. Like, forget all of you guys. This is, this is, I'm gonna do it. Um, And then I noticed like, based off of that negativity, like it didn't foster what I needed to grow. So it kind of became do the impossible. Yes, it, do, it is based off of like what others, pe- other people say, but it's more so doing what I think is possible. It's like, it, it, it kind of evolved into, so my why is just like doing what you think you can do, regardless of what other people think you can do. So all of the, uh, the accomplishments that I set out need to be 100% 
within what I think is possible and what I think I can do um, and, and accomplishing those goals. I love it, man. I, I just love the, I just love the message you like keep pushing, you know, even the perfect like hashtag or slogan for your brand is do the impossible. Like, and that is, I'm sure motivating so many like younger kids and the yeah. next upcoming dunkers to just like, literally just do that, man. Like, so yeah, it just keeps adding to your story, bro, which I, which I'm, I'm loving that we're uncovering it more and more. Awesome. Um, so continue to build on this, you know, do the impossible yeah. uh, branding. You know, let's talk about the world record a little bit. Okay. Let's, first of all, let's talk about like just why you want to do it. Yeah. And then maybe you can give some context into how you plan to accomplish it. Definitely. So the, like I said, with, with this one, the why, the big why was like, just thinking I can do it. Like one of those things where it's like, this one didn't really stem from anybody saying I couldn't do it. This one didn't stem from like that negative place of like trying to prove somebody wrong. Um, Because I think at this point when I decided to like, you know, this is something I wanted to pursue, I, you know, evolved it past that. Mm -hmm. So it's just like one of those things where I look at like, man, like what is it going to take to do it? And is that, is that even possible? And it's like, searching my heart of hearts like yes it's it's truly possible it's not going to be easy but it, it is absolutely do a doable feat and like when it's done um like I, I you look at there's a track story of an olympic runner roger bannister um and at the time in the early 1900s they thought it was physically possible impossible for a human to run a uh sub four minute mile and the crazy thing about this story is not only uh, the fact that he accomplished it, but in the time of him accomplishing it, since he's accomplished it, hundreds of people have broken that feat. So it's like, like one of the big goals of like do the impossible is like not only like doing things at that level, but I want to be at the point where it's like, I've inspired so many people to accomplish, you know, it can be the same feat. It can be different feats, but it's like, dude, that like that guy like did impossible things. And like, I watched him do it. And now I'm going to go home and like 100%, do yeah. this impossible thing because like I watched him do it and he said, I can do it too. And it's like, that's like, that idea is like what fuels me that like, it's like, even talking about it at this point, it's like, like I've like on the other side of this wall is my gym. And it's like, man, I'm about to, you know, go in there and like go hard today. Cause like, I, I need to, like, I need to inspire somebody to, to yeah. do that impossible. I love it. So, so let's just touch on that. You, like, yeah. Obviously I've seen the videos. Some people may not have, I love that you built the gym. Love that you added the LED lights around and just kind of yeah. like <laughs> your own kind of vibe. Yeah. Touch on this, man. Like you're squatting like crazy amounts of weights. I just don't even understand what's going on when I watch you. It's, it's wild. Um, first of all, I guess the question is, are you, why are you squatting so much? Is the reason because you want to, first of all, you know, show that you're back strong and is, is squatting that amount? Let's say, I think you just did four something, right? Yeah. Four, 443 for a front four, squat. 443. Is that just like bulletproofing your body, just getting you ready for that, this world record in that next stage of life? Yeah. So I think, I think one of the things that's in there, there's a lot of like, when you, um, like if I were to sit here and talk vertical leap, that would be another whole hour, two hours yeah, I can uh, imagine. in terms of, in terms of that training, but you know, short answer, the, the ultimate, you know, way of achieving this goal is, you know, being physically as strong as possible while being, you know, as light as possible. So it's like priming and prepping my body to produce as much force as I humanly possibly can. So it's like, right now in the stage of training, I'm in that ugly stage of training where it's like, all right, learn how to produce as much force as possible. So that's why you're seeing, you know, 500 pound back squat, 440 front squat. And I'm, I'm getting to a point where it's like, like I've set arbitrary numbers and I've obviously just hit them. So now it's like, I'm going to start transitioning into a phase of, you know, trying to pr- produce as much force as fast as possible. So now you'll start to see like, plyometrics and just different you know the training involves as you know and then as i get closer and closer now it's like all right now we got to start getting into weight management um i'm sitting at like 190 to 195 and it's like all right how do i stay as strong as i can and how do i get to like 185 and it's like once you put all of that together um you have like this this recipe and it's funny because i like people make uh 
vertical leap training sound like rocket science. And when you think about it, essentially it is because it's all based off of this simple physics principle, you know, force equals mass times acceleration, where it's like you're trying to produce as much force as fast as possible while being light. And that's how you produce enough force to, you know, separate from the earth and jump high. So it's like taking all of that knowledge and, and practically applying it to my training um, systematically to get to like this goal. It, it, and it's like looking at the feats that I've hit and, and it's crazy. Cause like people, like I said, you, you look at the people look at the end result and they don't look at the process. Yeah. Like looking at the squat stuff is a big indicator of this is going to, to come. Because I remember two years ago when I front squat 400 pounds for the first time, four days later, I did the double between the legs. So it's like learning, learning how to produce force and like, learn, like learning that and applying it and, and like staying true to like what you're doing. And like how we've been talking with the content creation, grinding and staying determined, like then you get to that, that ultimate championship. So like without like, you know, not sounding too cocky and not sounding too confident, like 2021, like a human will dunk over 12 feet just based off of the things that are happening and how like training has been going. Like it's, it's, it's a matter of time. Dude, I love that. Cause my, my next question was going to ask you like, yo, when do you think you're going to, Oh, get it's, it's so. like, like it's happening for sure. Like, and if, yeah. if I could set it up the way I want to set it up, like, like get into a nice gym, get into yes. a nice, like it, it, like it could, it could easily happen. It can easily happen. Like first quarter, 2021. Um, now with quarantine and stuff like that, it might, it might, you know, change some things, but I, I definitely plan on making a run, even worst case scenario, even if I have to like throw up cinder blocks back on my hoop and like, you know, raise it up, start, doing, yeah. start raising it up to 12 feet. Like it, it's, it's going to happen. Dude, that's sick. I, I just hope that quarantine does go away so you can do it how you want it to be. But I also yeah. hope it goes away so that potentially like I could be back in LA with Dad and maybe we can pull up and like watch. Definitely. That, that would be amazing. It's cool that to have be... some people around there to watch it and yeah. just witness like that moment in history. So anyways, man, I, I really hope yeah. so. Cause I think that would be, that'd be dope. And like you said, just continuing to like build out your legacy. So yeah. throughout the podcast, we talked about so much stuff. What's funny is usually I have like a bunch more questions that I would ask, but we've already touched on so many good things through the in-depth conversation of what your championship is, and just where you want to take things. Yeah. I guess the kind of last thing I want to ask you, cause like, you know, my biggest thing is, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I love the business side. That's what I do within the lab. And that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. How to like build, you know, these massive e-commerce, you know, online social media brands yeah. that are massive all over the world. So I always like to pick the brains of the people I talk to about the business side. So, how has the business side been for you? Is that something you enjoy? That's like my first question. Yeah. Um, short answer, no. Like I, it's it's one of those things because it's like obviously training dunking comes natural. The yeah. business side, once I've like truly embraced the the true business side, I, I suck at it. And it's like being, being, you know, transparent and being real with myself, it's hard. It, you know, it, it's work. It's daily work. It's always... Like with dunking, you build up to a certain point and it's always kind of there. Business is constantly evolving, constantly like you can hit, you can hit it big here and you still have to like reinvent. Like you said, like you can be big on Instagram and suck on YouTube. Like yeah, my Twitter is sitting at 13K. Like, I don't know, like I've been trying so hard on Twitter. It's like, no matter what I do, like it does not, it does not go up. And it's like, I hopped on, I hopped on TikTok for 36 seconds, you know, posted a video, hit a million views. And all of a sudden, like, like, you know, I'm at hundred K verified. And it's like, so it's like business, business is, is tough. Um, so no, <laughs> I, I love, I love the honesty throughout the whole interview, man. Yeah. Um, but so with that being said, what excites you most about, cause you're an entrepreneur, right? Then you're yeah. all these, all these different things, but you're all building multiple businesses. Definitely. So, you know, what are you most excited about? Or I guess the question I have is, you know, where do you want to take the business side of, you know, Jay Clark, the jump or, or just Jonathan Clark himself? Definitely. So, um, well, the business side of Jonathan Clark is I just kind of want to achieve all of the things that I, I set out to do. So like, I want to do the double, the 360 double between the legs. I want to yep. dunk on 12 feet. I want to, you know, be recognized as one of the best dunkers in the world. Um, and kind of all those accolades. That's the Jonathan Clark goals. Jay Clark, the jumper. 
I want to take that brand beyond myself. I, I like almost like Batman style. Like I want it to be an idea. I don't want it to like, I want do the impossible to live on even after I can't dunk anymore to where it's like, I can, you know, have something to pass on to my son if he chooses to take it or if he doesn't choose to take it where it's like, you know, you, you look at this idea of generational wealth. So like, I want it to be an idea where it's like, all right, you know, I built this, here you go. Like you can do whatever you want with it. You don't have to. Um, and just kind of continue to expand and evolve um, beyond this dunking thing because dunking is such a niche market where like there might be a you know layups. You look at like layups, layups are as big as dunking at T-Jazz, times. Like, yeah. you know, you look at like Cell and T-Jazz have posted videos that have done like more views than, than certain dunkers and the dunker like actually took that same layup and dunked it. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, so it's like you you can't you can't like limit that like you said you can't limit yourself. So it's like making it, like growing it past um, just dunking. And 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 I've like been working on a couple ideas and and you know physical products and businesses and Perfect. trying to create a, a league and just so on and so forth and stuff like that. Yeah. I I like that you're just constantly evolving. Like you said, I think one of the best things about one of the many good qualities about you is like you were able to identify certain things ahead of other people. For example, like you, you, you put your ego to the side and you realize that dunking is a niche, which yeah. a lot of people don't understand because at the end of the day, like you're going to become capped at one Definitely. point for the amount of people that can be reached. And like that, and this, I, another question just came to mind too, that we can talk about is, you know, how many more dunks can be done? Like, do you just think it's, just going to keep evolving obviously with athletes and creativity because I also, and maybe this, you can answer it as well as like, is dunker fatigue a thing that you think fans can experience? Yes. So like, if you look at, and, and it's kind of one of those things like where you look at the trend of dunking. So in the eighties, the dunk contest was the biggest thing out, right? right. They had, they had, they had, uh, in the eighties, early nineties, they had, uh, Foot Locker had a dunk contest with professional athletes and like $50,000 prizes. And we're talking about the nineties and you look, you flash forward to today um, or maybe 10 years ago, $10,000 was probably one of the biggest contests. So there was a fatigue gap because there was a performance gap where it's like the expectation of the fans didn't match the reality of what could be delivered. Right. I think as we evolve as humans and get better, you know, my son, my grandson, my great grandson, they're going to be doing things like, you know, four times through the, they're going to be doing crazy yeah, stuff. Don't know. However, yeah. based off of current need and, you know, watching people like, you know, break the mold, like, like one of the good things that I think, you know, there will be a resurgence in dunking when I do 360 between the legs, when I do 12 foot, but beyond that, you know, people are going to be looking at a certain point. It's going to be what's next, you know, when is somebody going to jump? 13 feet. So I, I do believe that there, there is going to be a fatigue. I do think, um, I don't think there's a limit on what can be done, but I think the expectation is not going to match the reality that can be offered. And that we've seen that with like track and field where Usain Bolt kept breaking the world record and everybody was really hyped by that. But then at a certain point, human, human uh, capability does not match the expectation of what people like people want to see somebody run 10 or nine, two. And right. it's like, Faster, we're, yeah. not, we're not there yet. Um, so in that gap, there's going to be a lull of like dunks and, and, and you're like, I think people are going to be hurt by it unless, you know, you can regulate it and, and, and make it a sport to where it can kind of stay fresh and, and um, it can evolve uh, from a competition standpoint. But from the social media standpoint of just posting dunks, that's going to get played out within the next you know, 10, 15 years, unless something happens, I think. So, um, yeah. No, I agree. And I think that makes perfect sense how you just kind of put that in, into perspective. So this is like almost a two hour, uh, two hours of your time, which I, I genuinely appreciate. I hope the listeners will, I think in terms of podcasts, this has been, just been like great in terms of learning and just the experiences and everything you talked about. So again, I appreciate you appreciate yeah. the fact that you took the time to come on and do this and basically how I end every segment is I kind of just give the floor to the guest. Yeah. Um, whether you want to say something to the listeners, talk about a cause, 
drop a quote, a piece of motivation, kind of anything. It just kind of okay. That's you. cool. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna start it with, you know, as much as you have kind of shown like your thanks for me, like I gotta, you know, I gotta stop and like thank you guys, right? You and Dev and like the whole in the lab because it's it's weird. I won't say weird, but it's like one of the tough things about me as somebody that creates content my personal views on what I like to consume are a lot different than I guess what a lot of people do. And I'm truly a big fan of in the lab. Like I love the videos. I love like the way you, like the way you do it is, is so awesome. And and kind of just like everything that you guys have done from creating your own shoe, creating your own brand. And it's like, to me, like that's the epitome of, of content creation. It's not like, looking at like other people and like hitting it big and like only living in that space it's like what 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 you guys have done is just amazing um and i have a couple questions that i would love to you know pick your brain with after podcast is over and stuff like that but i i I just want to give you guys a shout out for what you guys are doing because it's awesome um i guess i'll end let me see I'll, i'll end it on i'll end it on a positive i'm gonna read i'll read a poem Oh, I love um, that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Couldn't be done. Okay. This is a poem by you, a student. No, so it's 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 a poem that. So I did a I did a conference and uh, a motivational speaker came and spoke to these kids and he read this poem and and once he read the poem to me it kind of like it changed it changed everything but it 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 goes along with the do the impossible movement um it's called it couldn't be done by edgar guest um and i'll just read it and then we'll kind of just you know tackle it somebody said that it couldn't be done but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't but he would be one who wouldn't say so until he tried so he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face if he had worried he'd hit it he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it Somebody scoffed. Oh, you'll never do that. At least no one's ever done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat. And the first thing we knew, he'd begun it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubt it or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one, the danger that awaits to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin, take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done and you'll do it. Damn, bro. I got low-key got goosebumps, man. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so like, when, I, when I heard that, it, it really just kind of, you know, it, it just changed. Like, you know, um, so I think the, the, the message that I want to end with, you know, for the for let's say the entrepreneurs that watch this for growth, like it can be done. You, you know, you got to put in that work. It's a grind. It's not, you know, it's not a, let me do this. And then all of a sudden, you know, financial freedom, I'm a millionaire Um, to the kids that are watching. It's a daily grind. You're you're not going to be LeBron James overnight. LeBron James wasn't LeBron James overnight. He's been putting in every single day, working on his craft. Every single person that has gotten to their dream had to put in, you know, a sick amount of, you know, you know, 10,000 out. And it's just yeah, like, it's, it's, you know, you're in the lab. Like all, all the things that you guys say is 100% true in terms of, you know, getting to your goals and, and, you know, becoming that champion that you want to be, but it's possible and don't give up. And, and you guys got it. Oh, I love it, man. I, I'm not. So one of my big goals this year is to be like a monster at podcast. Okay. So and, and even last year, I haven't done that many podcasts yet, but I've done a decent amount. This was the best end <laughs> I've had so far. And I think this will continue to be the best end for a long time because first of all, I never would have expected a poem, Okay, next, the poem of that magnitude, which I'm, I'm literally going to cut this piece up and use it was okay. awesome. So I, I appreciate that. Again, I appreciate your time. Um, if you guys don't know who this man is, go follow him at J Clark, the jumper, right. On all socials, all like every single social, yeah. like, Pinterest, you type in J Clark the Jumper. <laughs> chances are, chances are I, I got it. So whatever sites you're on, hit him up and yeah. just continue to follow his journey. Let's let's support him through the world record attempts and everything else he has going on through life journeys as teacher and so much more. And yeah, Jay, just thank you again, man. Man, thanks for having me. <laughs>